Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Bucknor. I am a radiologist at UCSF, and I am so excited to be here with you today as part of the Bay Area Science Festival. This event is near and dear to my heart. Our department has been a long-standing supporter of this event, and it's just really exciting to be with you in this hybrid virtual format. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what what is a radiologist? What, what do we do in the Department of Radiology at UCSF? I'm gonna talk for a little bit over 10 minutes and then my amazing colleague, Dr. Roxana Juarez is gonna talk a little bit more and answer your questions, any questions that you might have about what I've said or anything else that has been bugging at you in terms of what a radiologist is and what we do. So without further ado, I'm going to share some slides here and we'll get started. All right, so what is a radiologist? Well, very simply put, a radiologist is a physician that uses imaging to diagnose and treat patients. Um, sounds pretty simple, right? Fairly straightforward. Um, radiology is an amazingly beautiful and complex field of medicine. And these, these four images here really nicely show radiologists in their natural habitat, what we spend a lot of our day doing. So you can see that in three of the images, so the top right, the bottom right, and the lower left, we see radiologists in front of uh, very large computer screens. So these large computer screens are part of something we call a PAC system that is displaying the images to us that are acquired somewhere else in the hospital or the clinic. So wherever patients are coming into the hospital and getting their images, those images get sent from there to a central database and they get distributed to these reading room areas throughout the hospital or clinic system all over the city of San Francisco, for example. And we can see that we can use these computer systems to really get amazing, an amazing level of detail uh, of what's happening inside of the human body. And we have lots of different imaging technologies and then tools on our pack stations to, to measure things in lots of different ways. So not just the size, but the exact density, the sort of shades of grays that we're seeing here all provide incredibly important information to helping us make the right diagnosis of the patients. And that's what we spend a lot of our time doing, trying to get the right diagnosis. So referring clinicians send patients to us with a particular question, and we do our best to, to move that patient a little bit closer to a diagnosis. And you, you often need that diagnosis in order to determine what's the best possible treatment. In the top left image, you'll see an, a reference to what we do some of the time as well, which is procedures under the, the guidance of imaging. And so it looks like here we have a radiologist that is going over what a particular CT guided procedure is going to look like, what they're going to expect to have happen. And that's another important part of our practice. I'll talk about that as well. Um, I just want to make a distinction between radiologists and radiology technologists. Uh, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, so radiology technologists are, are amazing healthcare professionals who are primarily in charge of acquiring these images. So whether or not it's CT technologists using CT scanners to get the images or MRI technologists, X-ray technologists, or then we have a special, special name for our folks who help us to acquire um, ultrasound image, images, those are our sonographers. These, this team of healthcare professionals is really critical for us being able to do everything that we do. We couldn't do it without them. So thankfully we have um, these professionals who have expertise just in getting those images as perfect as they possibly can be, and then send those images to radiologists for interpretation. So how do we make images of the body? How do we go about doing this? There are lots of different ways that we can choose from depending on what is in the, the patient's best interest. So we can acquire radiographs or we, we often, you know, we'll casually refer to these as x-rays because we make them by, by sending x-rays through the body and creating a negative imprint of the x-rays that get stopped and the x-rays that make it through. Um, so that's, that's a, a very sort of core original radiology technology that, that goes back um, over 100 years. 
Here we nice see, see a very nice pediatric x-ray unit down at Mission Bay. You can see it's uh, age appropriate and hopefully makes the experience of getting your x-ray exam there a little bit more pleasant. Now, commuted tomography or CT scanners are very similar to x-rays. Really, this, this, the same fundamental physical property. We're just sending those, those x-rays through the patients in multiple directions and then using that to create a sort of comprehensive slice of the patient, whether or not we're looking kind of in this plane or, or straight down in the sagittal plane or like this in the coronal plane, we're able to get an incredible level of detail of what's happening inside of a patient. So this is what a CT scanner looks like, a classic sort of donut shaped imaging scanner um, system there. Ultrasound, uh, many of you are probably familiar with this. This is a technology where we have a little ultrasound transducer and use that to send sound energy into the patient and um, the sound waves bounce off structures and come back to the transducer and tell the transducer um, where they've been. And that helps us to make an image in real time. And we use that for lots of different indications throughout the, the hospital system. Magnetic resonance imaging is a, a really incredible, um, relatively newer imaging modality. Again, we see sort of a donut shaped scanner similar to a CT scan, but there's a lot, very, very different physics happening when we're acquiring images with an MRI. The patient is put into this really high strength magnetic field, and we're using the changes that happen in the body in response to the magnetic field to get a sense of what different uh, tissues are present. And these computer systems that are connected to the scanners take into account all that information, what's happening to the different particles within us, within the presence of this magnetic field to help us create images that have this amazing, absolutely um, breathtaking level of detail. So finally, nuclear medicine, like positron emission tonography or, or um, PET scans, this is technology where we are more often putting a radioactive substance inside of a patient and then looking at, at the images that get created as the, the radioactive particles exit the patient and are detected by a scanner. So this is a really cool device that we're looking at here. It's a combination of a PET scanner and an MRI scanner that's gonna give us unprecedented level of understanding of functionally what's happening in the body. Nuclear medicine tests are particularly good at giving a sense of, of mapping different functional processes inside of the body. So here, just to you know, take a simple structure like the knee and give you a sense of how different it can look on different imaging modalities. In this image on the far left, we have an X-ray. In the in image in the middle, we have a CT scan. In the image on the right, we have an MRI scan. Um, the first two are from the same patient, actually. And we can see that this, this X-ray on the left or radiograph on the left, really high spatial resolution. The edge of that bone is super sharp. So in the knee here, we have the femur, we have the tibia with the fibula and then the patella. These four bones make up the key um, articulations or joints of the knee. We can see the, the joint spaces very nicely and a little bit of what's happening in the soft tissues. Really great spatial resolution. Better, in fact, than CT scan, even though we often think about CT scans as a slightly more advanced technique. Yes, it is more advanced and that allows us to go slice by slice, but it actually has lower spatial resolution than what we see with radiographs and x-rays. But we can use that slice by slice approach to really allow us to see much higher level of detail of what's happening inside of the patient. So like I mentioned, these two images are from the same patient and we can very nicely see on the CT scan that there is this line going through the tibia right here. And that's a really significant fracture in this patient who's had a traumatic injury. And this patient, their x-ray on the left, you can also kind of get a sense of the fracture as this line, but a lot harder to see on the x-ray compared to the CT scan. And that's why it's always important that we're choosing the correct imaging modality for the correct indication. And then finally, on this image on the right, this is an MRI scan, and we're looking at a sagittal image. So the slices through the body are taken in this direction. Again, we see the femur and the tibia, but we can also get a sense of some of the soft tissue structures. So the quadriceps tendon that connects down to your patella, your kneecap. Here's the patellar tendon that connects the, the kneecap to the tibia. And we can see this sort of in between gray of the cartilage. We're actually looking at the cartilage structures that are at the ends of the bones. Absolutely amazing technology. 
Another great thing about MRI is that we can use it to look slice by slice, just like we can with CT scan. And so here we're looking at a shoulder. We can get a nice understanding of what's happening in soft tissues, the bones, um, just an, an amazing way to look inside of the body. So what's a typical day like? Um, well, it's going to vary in any radiology practice, but I think when, when radiologists are, are doing clinical work, it all will look fairly similar much of the time. So this is what my typical day looks like when I'm on, on clinical service. So I'll typically arrive at the hospital between 7 and 8.30 a.m. We're usually working an eight or 10 hour shift. We'll review imaging studies with our fellows and residents. So we are a, a training program. So we have physicians who are a little bit um, earlier along the pathway to becoming a radiologist who we're working with to provide care to patients. After we review um, those studies with them, they'll send a preliminary report our way, and then we will edit and finalize those reports. Um, fortunately, we have the best trainees in the country, and so we don't, don't, don't typically have to do much editing to those reports. And then finally, another important part of our day, as I've mentioned, is performing image guided procedures. So for me, that might be doing a procedure under ultrasound guidance, like this patient who's receiving a shoulder injection that is being very carefully and precisely guided using the combination of, of ultrasound to guide exactly where that needle is going to, um, to inject um, within a particular space in the shoulder. Um, sometimes we're doing more complicated procedures. So um, I actually specialize in an MRI guided um, procedure that we use to target tumors within the body. And, and here's uh, me interacting with a patient in that sort of situation. Okay, so how do you become a radiologist? Well, it takes a little while. Um, so radiologists all will complete a four-year undergraduate degree and then go on to do four years of medical school, a one-year internship after those four years of medical school. So after you know medical school, we are, are um, officially doctors or physicians, um, but then we'll need to complete the rest of our clinical training. So one-year internship where we get a sense um, how do other referring clinicians, what do they need to, to see from radiologists? Um, and then we'll move on into our dedicated diagnostic radiology residency. After four years of residency, we'll then do an additional one to two years of advanced subspecialized training in a fellowship. And that fellowship uh, is, tends to be a subspecialty area of the body. So I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist or MSK, and that's what I focus on exclusively. But there are also neuroradiologists and pediatric radiologists interventional radiologists, body radiologists who focus on the abdomen, pelvis, breast radiologists, cardiothoracic. There's so many wonderful subspecialty fields within radiology that allow us to provide really expert level care um, to all of the patients that we see. And all of these, these radiologists will then go on to be certified by the American Board of Radiology um, in a, a series of certification exams. Okay, so let's summarize. Radiologists are physicians that use imaging to diagnose and treat patients. Um, the imaging modalities that we use include radiographs or x-rays, CT scans, ultrasound, MRI, and nuclear medicine. And radiologists pursue at least nine years of training after college. Fortunately, it is an incredibly rewarding career. Um, so thank you so much again for your attention. Feel free to reach out to me. My email address and my Twitter handle are at the bottom left of the screen. And at this point, I'm going to hand it over to my amazing colleague, um, Dr. Roxana Wars, who's going to answer some questions for you all now. Thanks again.